Gathering for Gardner is the conference of some of the best, most amazing mathematical minds out there who are just all polymaths and they're all interested in different topics and each and every single one of them is uniformly interesting. Well, I try and describe it as a community of people who are interested in intersections between math and so many other different areas. Math and art, math and puzzles, math and magic. We live in such a wonderful interdisciplinary world and it's great to have uh, an organization, a community that celebrates those intersections. If not for Martin Gardner, I'm one of many people who would never have become known to a much broader audience. And many people got interested in mathematics or even in science by reading his columns in Scientific American. Everybody uh, has this connection with Martin, obviously, and, and he was the one who would then go out and try to understand things, try to learn things. He himself confessed that he had difficulty with a lot of the things that he was doing. He spent a lot of time trying to gain enough mastery then to be able to explain it, and spent his life sharing these things, trying to explain it to other people in a way that made it clear, the way that made it accessible to so many people, the way that gave them that aha moment. Martin Gardner said that the best way to really have people take in knowledge is to create a kind of hook. I am actually a non-mathematician, and I'm interested in pulling people together of all backgrounds to have a great math discussion. I thought, okay, I'm a high schooler. I'm going to come to this, this conference with a bunch of people who have PhDs in mathematics, and I'm going to be completely lost. It's been very much, oh, you're a high schooler, well, have you heard of this, and what got you interested in Martin Gardner, and can we show you some cool math tricks? And of course, I absolutely love that. What I do at the gathering usually is somebody's interested in the cube, and I'll explain to them something that's, that's related to what they know. There's a lot of inspiring stuff that happens here. Uh, I've run into a lot of cool people, spend a lot of time explaining things, and then getting interesting ideas about other things. Um, so the gathering is really a great place for learning about things you didn't know and sharing the ones that you did. How can you fail to learn? I mean, the whole time I was both learning and being absolutely amazed and surprised. The puzzles and the magic and the skepticism, um, they all tie together. They're not all mathematics, but they, uh, they all involve this kind of logical, rational thinking. That's really what, uh, in my mind, what Martin Gardner was all about, was sort of celebrating rationality. Let me show you fear. <laughs> it's about the celebration of simple truth. And it's about the struggle over simple truth, because when you add in magicians and skepticism, skepticism is coming at it from one side, mathematics is coming at it from this side, and magicians are there to mix things up. Another ball, through the cup, just like so. <laughs> just like this. You find people who know things here which are buried away in the recesses of the past, sets off a memory in somebody, and you get a bit of information that you never would have found out otherwise. You come and you interact with people, and you get this fantastic uh, creativity recharge, because people have so many different areas, and when you talk to them, little things they say trigger ideas in you that then expand in some crazy new direction that neither of you could have predicted. The future is already here, but it's not evenly distributed. But when I come to the gathering, I feel that I'm much closer to that front that is the future than I am uh, elsewhere. <laughs>